here at the Henry Moore Institute in Leeds to speak to Lisa Lefeuf about Katrina Palmer's radical installation, the Necropolitan Line. Okay, the starting point for this exhibition um, is the Crossbones Graveyard in Borough and then the London Necropolis Railway. Or is it the Necropolitan Line? Well, it's the London Necropolis Railway and also the Necropolitan Line. They're okay. sort of one, one of the same. And really, these two starting points, they're things that have fascinated Katrina Palmer for many, many years. And Crossbones was a cemetery that was built, and this is a real euphemism here, for single women. Single women meant prostitutes, um, but for single women. And the London Necropolitan Railway Line was a railway line to take you to the London necropolis. So if you think about a graveyard, I can bet my bottom dollar that for everyone, you immediately think of sculpture. You think about gravestones, headstones, halfway in the earth, falling apart, crosses, angels, eagles, tombs. And also when we think about them, it's this sense that we build to remember. There's this wonderful definition that I love that William Tucker has, that sculpture is subject to gravity and revealed in light. There's something else about sculpture as well that makes it so special. You need to have a physical, bodily encounter with it. You need to measure your own mass, volume. You need to think about scale. You need to think about how sculpture isn't just a thing that's autonomous. It possesses everything around us. So when you come into the gallery, the first thing that strikes you is there's no light. It's dark. So if we go back to William Tucker's definition of sculpture being subject to gravity and revealed in light, what does it mean when this austere institution doesn't put its lights on? Um, it means you have to think slightly differently. And then running right through the galleries, is a railway platform. And I have to tell you, I still can't quite believe how much of a railway platform this object is. It's got all the things that a platform has. It has a ramp, it has something called tactile paving. I didn't even know what tactile paving was until we worked on this exhibition. But it's those lumps that you have when you're close to the edge of a platform. There's yellow lines to make sure you know where the edge is. So all of these things that we don't necessarily look at on a day-to-day -day basis. And one of the things that I'm really fascinated by is that sculpture is something that is about an encounter, about a phenomenological moment. And for organisations like us here at the Henry Moore Institute, we always have to ask, why are we here? Why is art important? Why is sculpture important? And I really believe in an incredibly, even dogmatic way, there really is something at stake with art. Art enables us to exceed language, to say things that we can't do in any other way. Now what happens when we start to think about words as something that's solid, memorial, subject to gravity, revealed in light? What we're then doing is we're thinking about our negotiation with the world as a whole. And that sense of language being sculpture always makes me think of two amazing thinkers, one being John Cage. Now, John Cage advised that we paid attention to the spaces between words. And he said, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, it makes life more energetic and more interesting. The spaces between words, they're the things that makes language works. The spaces between objects, that's what makes sculpture work. Mm -hmm. And I think Katrina uses objects, uses language, and really they're all equal in different ways. The sense of narrative and the way that we tell stories, the way that we try and negotiate our place in the world. So one of the reasons why we really wanted to work with Katrina Palmer is because I think she's changing what sculpture can be. And the Henry Moore Institute is a part of the Henry Moore Foundation. And Moore set it up in 1977 to continue his legacy. And we understand our purpose as being really, really simple. Henry Moore changed the way we understand sculpture. His foundation continues to do that. And so Katrina Palmer is an artist who we are obliged to work with because she's changing sculpture.
Katrina has been thinking for many years about the sense of memorial, sculpture, language. So the interesting history is that um, it's quite hard for us to imagine this, but it wasn't until the middle of the 1800s that we as human beings realized that diseases spread through burial grounds. Um, and the 1850s was a, a moment when urban populations were rapidly increasing and um, also urban populations of the dead were rapidly increasing because of high rates or high birth rates but high infant mortality, um, virulent spreads of, of diseases and really simply city centres could not cope with their dead. And so in London a solution was found. Um, the idea was that in Surrey, in Brookwood, a necropolis would be built, a city of the dead. And the idea was that it would be big enough for the population of London forever. And of course, this isn't quite true, but it was built in Surrey. Now, if you're building a graveyard outside of a metropolitan centre, you need to think about how you would travel with the person who's, who's passed. And the only way to do it is on a railway line. So at London's Waterloo, a specific station was built the London Necropolitan Line, a private railway company, which I think is quite interesting, to go to a graveyard. So let's say you and I, Anna, we had a friend who passed away. We will buy three tickets to go to this amazing necropolis. Two will be returns for you and me. One will be a single for our friend. But if you think about that, I mean, in that small statement, we have returns because we come back and our friend doesn't. There's something really interesting about that. So we buy our tickets and we would have a choice. We could go first class, second class, or third class. And in reality, there was no difference between any of the classes other than the company that you would keep. So that's really, really interesting. So the three of us, we would head off on our journey from London Waterloo. It was quite a short journey, um, but the train would go respectfully slowly and we would choose which platform we would arrive at. We would either get off on the Anglican platform or the dissenters platform. So the Anglican platform was for Anglicans and the dissenters was for everybody else. It could be atheists, it could be a people of other religions. Um, and it was this idea that the two sides couldn't mix. So we get off on our platform and depending on our level of wealth, it would depend how our friend would move to his or her final resting place. And once we had the service over and done with, we'd need to wait for the train to come back. And the train might not quite be leaving yet, so we'd spend some time in the bar on the platform. But really this sense of this passage, this journey, if we think about all the different ways that we celebrate someone passing, it could be a pagan ceremony, it could be a shiva, it could be um, a high ritual event. It's very much about memory. It's about dematerialization. It's about someone disappearing. It's about an object no longer being with us and asking, is the object important or is the other stuff important? So if you think about the formality around sculpture, is sculpture about the object or is it about the concept? Again, they're really, really crucial sculptural concerns. The London Necropolitan Line ran until 1943 when bomb damage um, meant that it could no longer occur. But you can still just about see the branch line. And when you're within the galleries, we've got one of those classic maps and you can see one small branch line saying, London Necropolis Railway. So this sense of a journey is so important. Talking about the journey and people disappearing and then mm. no return, that's an idea that's brought in with the lift installation. Yes, completely. One of the things that Katrina's really interested in is the context of exhibition. So Katrina spent a lot of time just thinking about our galleries, so seeing lots of different exhibitions, thinking about how our spaces work. And she was really fascinated by the ways in which sculpture gets into the galleries. And one way it gets into the galleries is through a really heavy goods lift. And the only things that go in this lift are artworks and heavy machinery. 
The public mm. never ever goes in. So Katrina wanted to use this part of the galleries and she wanted exactly as you say to create a journey and hanging just as if it belongs to a lift operator is an mp3 player and some headphones and you can hear a remix version of this fantastic it is the track is that all there is And it's really this sense of, is that all there is to life? Is it as simple as that? It's a song of indifference and cynicism that you only really understand once you are an adult. On the hour, every hour, a whistle is blown, and it's a whistle that comes from the moment when the railways were nationalised. And the lift goes down, the doors open, our visitors are let out onto the street, and you find yourself in this strange place. It's completely disorientating. And then you have the choice to come back into the Institute or find yourself abandoned in the city. And again, it's this sense of, of movement, of feeling your physicality, these really sculptural provocations. And a one-way journey. And a one-way journey, that's exactly it. You can't come back. Um, so it's just like that Necropolitan Line journey.